Hey guys, welcome back to the Encrypted Capital Recap for Saturday, January 9th. Uh, first up, three reasons why Bitcoin has doubled in less than a month and why experts think it won't repeat its 2017 crash. So, Bitcoin has more than doubled in less than a month, leaving analysts and investors stunned and concerned about a possible market bubble. In many ways, the token's rally in recent months is crucially different than the surge seen three years ago, as buyers now range from casual day traders to fund managers handling billions of dollars in assets. Uh, easy monetary conditions and trillions of dollars in fiscal stimulus have led some investors to view the token as a new inflation hedge, and detailed below are the factors driving Bitcoin higher and why experts don't think the cryptocurrency will crash as it did in 2017. So definitely an interesting article, although the thing with investments is people need to take profit, especially these large institutions, they need to take profit for their investors. To say that it's not gonna crash, maybe it won't have a huge correction right off the bat, but just like we've seen in many bull cycles for Bitcoin, it always comes back down. I mean, it hit $1,100 uh, you know, several years ago, and then it came crashing right back down to roughly 150, 200 bucks. So investors do need to take profit, but let's go dive into this article and see exactly what it says here. So it says it took nearly 11 years for Bitcoin to reach $20,000 per coin for the first time in 2017. And 22 days later, the world's most popular cryptocurrency has surged another $20,000 and its momentum is so far holding strong. So Bitcoin's rapid climb back in 2017 was swiftly followed by sell-offs that erased the bulk of its quickly earned gains. But no such trend has emerged this time around, and experts say a combination of factors fueled the token surge through 2020 and will continue to boost Bitcoin in the new year. So detailed below are three reasons behind Bitcoin's spike and a discussion of why it's unlikely to suffer a crash similar to that seen two years ago. So first one they go into is fear of missing out. So it says, while passionate retail investors powered Bitcoin's 2017 rally, public companies sparked the token's latest climb. Uh, MicroStrategy started a chain reaction when it bought 425 million worth of Bitcoin in August and September. And Jimmy Nugent, president of the Bitcoin Association, uh, Jimmy Nugent, president of the Bitcoin Association, uh, told that to Insider. So the move opened the door for other public companies to view Bitcoin as a viable reserve asset. Uh, then it goes on to talk about Square because uh, they own uh, they had a 50 million dollar purchase, and then PayPal adopted Bitcoin not too far after. And so uh, it says in institutional investors have since pushed billions of dollars into the cryptocurrency market and their involvement has played the biggest part in the token's meteoric rise through the end of 2020. But anytime I see articles come out that say that, oh, we don't think it's going to crash or it's not going to correct, you know, that's when people start getting greedy. And those are the times that people have already built their positions are going to want to start selling. You're going to want to start selling into a green candle. You're not going to want to start selling, um, you know, when you know, everything's red essentially. So I think, um, you know, maybe they have a point uh, on a couple of these things for why it's continued to rise so high, but I wouldn't get too cocky and say that there's not going to be a correction because there's always a correction. There's always going to be profit taking. There's always going to be large institutions that want to go ahead and make a return for their investors. And you also have to know that a lot of these institutions have such a large portion of the market cap of some of these coins, especially some of these smaller cap coins, where they have to take profit in order to regain their market share uh, later on down the line. So in order for them to keep, you know, let's say they have, you know, well, somebody like Grayscale, they have 3% of Bitcoin. Other institutions that have larger positions in some of these smaller cap coins, they have to take profit and regain the market share. So if they have, let's say, 15 or 20% of a coin and it goes up, you know, one, two, three, four hundred percent well, they're going to have to sell off to take profits and then buy back lower so they can keep up with owning a majority of the market share to control the market. I could be wrong, but I feel like that is what institutions need to provide a return for their investors. So when I do see articles like this, as I mentioned, it does make me a little weary. So let's go into the coin market cap right now. We're looking at Bitcoin sitting at $40,770. Ethereum, $1,234. And that's up 57% over the last seven days. And then you have XRP at 32 cents, up 44.7% over the last seven days. And so 
Now I want to get in and talk about a few of the coins that I'm keeping an eye on. I feel that have a lot of potential that still have yet to really have a crazy move in the market like some of the other coins we've seen such as Stellar Lumens, uh, District Network Token, uh, District DNT in particular. That rose, uh, I believe it was trading at roughly one to two cents and it rose all the way up to 20 cents. So 20x gain on your money. There have been several other coins that I've been wanting to keep an eye on that haven't made those kind of moves yet. So let's go dive into some of these. So right now the first one I have is Bitcoin Cash. Bitcoin Cash has a market cap of $9 billion right now, and the volume over the last 24 hours is roughly $9 billion. And so if we look at the chart here, this is over the last couple of years, and we can start seeing that it is starting to break to the upside a little bit here. Um, the 24-hour high right now is $513, up from $420, and it's live right now. So we're looking at a 14% price change uh, so $69.77 over the last day or so. And if you guys don't know about Bitcoin Cash, so uh, Bitcoin Cash is a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system that aims to become sound global money with fast payments, micro fees, privacy, and high transaction capacity. So in the same way that physical money, such as the dollar bill, is handed directly to the person being paid, Bitcoin Cash payments are sent directly from one, from one person to another. So Bitcoin Cash is a fork of Bitcoin. And I guess their main objective is that it's trying to be more scalable than Bitcoin. In 2017, the Bitcoin project and its community split in two over concerns about Bitcoin scalability. So the result was a hard fork, which created Bitcoin Cash. And now it's considered by supporters to be a legitimate continuation of the Bitcoin project as a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash. So all Bitcoin holders at that time of the fork automatically became owners of Bitcoin Cash. So if you had Bitcoin, you automatically got Bitcoin Cash sent to your wallet. So it was essentially free money. And a lot of people took advantage of that. So unlike Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash aims to scale so it can meet the demands of global payment systems. At the time of the split, the Bitcoin Cash block size was increased from one megabyte to eight megabytes. So an increased block size means Bitcoin Cash can now handle significantly more transactions per second while keeping fees extremely low, solving the issues of payment delays and high fees experienced by some users on the Bitcoin network. So as of November 2020, Bitcoin Cash has a block size of 32 megabytes. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at the Bitcoin Cash chart here. And we can see right now, uh, let me zoom out a little bit here. So right now we're on a two hour chart and we can see that just from back here. So November 18th, all the way up to now, you're looking at 113% gain. And it has yet to make this big move, but we can see a lot of volume coming in here, a lot of accumulation taking place right here. And now the price is currently up 13.6% over the last 24 hours on TradingView. And so Bitcoin Cash was started by Roger Ver, and he's you know been a very early Bitcoin advocate. He began investing in Bitcoin in 2011, and the first investment he made was for Charlie Shrem's BitInstant. So Ver's investment allowed the company to hire a designer and another programmer. And then he invested over a million dollars into new Bitcoin related startups, including Ripple, Blockchain.info, BitPay and Kraken. So he has been investing in cryptocurrency companies for a very long time. He's got his hands in almost everything. And in 2011, uh, Ver's company Memory Dealers was the first to accept Bitcoin as a payment. So his early advocacy for Bitcoin earned him the moniker Bitcoin Jesus. And he's been a prominent supporter since then. So, um, but yeah, in 2012, he was organizing meetups in Sunnyvale and he is one of five founders of the Bitcoin Foundation. And he also serves as CEO of Bitcoin.com. And so let's go over to his Twitter here. So you can see here right now, he's got pinned to the top of his Twitter. The reasons that he started investing in Bitcoin in 2011 are the same exact reasons that he's investing in Bitcoin Cash today. A lot of it has to do with low fees, fast payments, reliable payments, scaling, and a host of other things. So I definitely think Bitcoin Cash is one to keep an eye out for. It normally it always pumps right after Bitcoin gets done making large moves. And it looks like it's starting to do that right now. So uh, the next one I have up that I've been keeping an eye on is Dash. And so Dash was in the news recently. Dash has a market cap of $1 billion and its last uh, 24 hour trading volume is 762 million. 
down about 10%. Um, but right now, Dash is up 10% in the last 24 hours, currently trading at $108. And if you guys don't know about Dash, uh, it's an open source blockchain and cryptocurrency focused on offering a fast, cheap global payment network that is decentralized in nature. And according to the project's white paper, Dash seeks to improve upon Bitcoin by providing stronger privacy and faster transactions. And so uh, Dash basically just means digital cash. And it was launched back in 2014 as a fork of Litecoin. And Litecoin was a fork of Bitcoin. So uh, the founders of Dash are Evan Duffield and Kyle Hagen. The uh, project was originally called Xcoin. And then it eventually got changed to Darkcoin. And then it ended up rebranding to Dash in March of 2015. So uh, it says that what makes Dash unique is to be the most user-friendly and scalable payments-focused uh, cryptocurrency in the world. And so to accomplish this, the project relies on a network of master nodes, which are servers backed by collateral held in Dash that are designed to provide advanced services securely and governance over Dash's proposal system. So you guys can read more about that. All this information is on CoinMarketCap right now. And so uh, you guys may remember Dash was in the news recently. Uh, because it was faced with uh, regulatory pressure um, via Bittrex. They decided that they wanted to go ahead and delist Dash because of privacy concerns. And then Dash recently came out and said that they were not a privacy coin. Uh, you can see in a tweet here, it says, from a technical standpoint, Dash's privacy functionality is no greater than Bitcoin's, making the label of privacy coin a misnomer for Dash. So they reached out to Bittrex to request a meeting with their compliance team and they're hoping to rectify it soon. So let's go ahead, we'll take a look at the Dash chart here. Dash's all-time high was $1,600, and right now it is up roughly 14.23% over the last 24 hours, and it looks to start making some similar moves like some of the other coins I'm keeping an eye out. We can see over here that Tron's looking to make a move. Uh, Telcoin, which I've had my eye on for a while, is up 23% today, and so, um, yeah, definitely keep an eye out for Dash. I don't think the privacy concerns are going to be too detrimental to the project. Uh, I mean, you got to think that this project's not just going to die off like uh, any of these other coins. I mean, Monero was also mentioned as a privacy coin that Bittrex was delisting. And then you also have Zcash. But if you look at like the Grayscale Investment Trust, Grayscale still has a position in Zcash. So it means that they're obviously not too concerned about the privacy concerns if a company like Grayscale is holding Zcash in their portfolio. So let's go ahead. Another project I was looking at, which I just mentioned, was Tron. So Tron has a $2.5 billion market cap. And right now, uh, the Tron price statistics, it's up 15.5% for the day in the last 24 hours. Again, similar to Dash and Bcash, you can start seeing that there obviously was a clear amount of accumulation taking place right here. And now it's looking like it's starting to break to the upside. So if you guys don't know about Tron, uh, Tron is a blockchain-based operating system that aims to ensure this technology is suitable for daily use, whereas Bitcoin can handle up to six transactions per second and Ethereum up to 25. Tron claims that its network has a capacity for over 2,000 TPS or transactions per second 24-7. Uh, so uh, this project is best described as a decentralized platform focused on content sharing and entertainment. And to this end, one of its biggest acquisitions was the file sharing service BitTorrent, back in 2018, and it says that overall, Tron has divided its goals into six phases, and these include delivering simple distributed file sharing, driving content creation through financial rewards, allowing content creators to launch their own personal tokens, and decentralizing the gaming industry. So as far as the founders go, uh, we're looking at Justin Sun, who is the CEO, and I have Justin Sun's info pulled up here. So Justin Sun, he is a tech entrepreneur and founder of Tron and the current CEO of Rainberry Inc. And he actually used to be a chief representative of the greater China area for Ripple. So he's got ties to Ripple as well. And it goes on to say that he was, uh, when he was 26 years old, he was chosen by Jack Ma, who obviously is the founder of Alibaba, to study at Hupan uh, University and was the only millennial among the first graduates. It looks like Tron has a pretty talented tech entrepreneur CEO. And if we go ahead over here and take a look at the charts, again, just like Dash and Bcash, it looks like Tron is starting to make its move up now, up 15% as we speak. And again, you know, a whole area of accumulation right here. I do anticipate like when Tron pumps, it pumps very hard. I wouldn't be surprised to see Tron go from 
three cents where it's currently at now back to its all-time high of 30 cents rather quickly and let's see what else do we have uh, and then just a, another bit of uh, information on Tron so they broke a bunch of milestones last year and here's a few of them so they acquired steam it back in February of 2014 uh, they have a partner with Samsung. Uh, I'm sorry, Samsung is a partner with them. They have a partnership as the exclusive Tron section launched on the Samsung Play Store. And then in May, the JST token sale of Poloniex sold out in under five minutes. So, you know, Tron was one of those big coins uh, that took place in the ICOs, the last bull run. And I believe they were one of the highest earning ICOs that were featured. So, like I said, Tron is on my radar. I've been watching it for a while, and right now it looks like it's starting to take off. So definitely going to be keeping an eye, out, an eye out for it on 2021. And then next we have Telcoin. So Telcoin is ranked number 412 uh, out of roughly you know 7,000 coins that are on coin market cap. Uh, right now it is up roughly 40% in the market cap, and the volume is 847,000. Two hundred and forty-four dollars. So that's up eighty-nine percent in twenty-four hours. So again, as we can see here, it's coming right off. It's basically been flatlining since Ju uh, roughly July, and now it's really starting to make its move. And so, if Telcoin gets back to anywhere near its all-time high of what should be about a penny, I believe is when it debuted. I mean, it's still you know point zero zero. What is it? Point zero zero three four nine zero 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 three four nine cents. So very, very, it's a lower cap, lower market cap coin, but I do feel like it's got some really, really great potential. So Telcoin, if we go ahead and look here, Telcoin was established in 2017 in Singapore and Telcoin leverages blockchain technology to provide access to decentralized financial services on any mobile device. And Telcoin's launch product is centered on high speed, low cost digital remittances to mobile money platforms and e-wallets. Telcoin partners with telecoms and mobile money platforms globally to make sending money easy, fast, and secure. Its contactless service using the Telcoin application is available on iOS and Android, and the team aims to increase financial inclusion by significantly lowering the cost to send a remittance, which averages approximately 7% globally. And so it is, a regu it is regulated in Singapore as a major payment institution by the Monetary Authority of Singapore. So they are working with regulators and they are working with Gcash and quite a few other big remittance and, and mobile comp providers in the Philippines. And so they had an update that says, we look forward to a wide public release of version 2.0 of the Telcoin app. And then they are excited for integration for many of their partners in 2021, building a world renowned force in the remittance industry. And then over the second half of the year, they designed and tested numerous layers and products, including multiple public pilot programs. And then in addition, we are pleased to report that their new head of Android has been lightning fast and catching up, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So as far as the Telcoin ecosystem goes, it's now processing over twice the daily transaction volume of Bitcoin. The Ethereum network has undergone what can only be described as a financial renaissance over the past 12 months. And so we all know that Ethereum is moving over from proof of work to proof of stake, which will hopefully increase adoption and make it faster and more scalable. And so since Telcoin is built on the Ethereum network and they are focusing on remittance payments via mobile phones for the unbanked, I think they have huge, huge potential. And let's go ahead. We'll take a look over at the Telcoin chart here. Uh, I've been talking about Telcoin since all the way back here. And I believe like November, October, November, I released it in our newsletter. And right now, uh, you know, again, huge accumulation phase, a Wyckoff accumulation right here. And then it has absolutely exploded. And just from December 25th until now, 220% gain, and it's still going. So, you know, a lot of coins to look out for, but as you can see to the right here, we're looking at Telcoin, Tron, and Bitcoin Cash, as well as Dash. Uh, all of these guys are looking to making, uh, are looking, looking like they're making a move to the upside here. And so I would definitely keep an eye out for them. As always, do your own research. Don't just take my word for it. Go ahead, dive into some of this information yourself and you know, don't spend more or don't invest more than you can afford to lose and you'll be in good shape. So with that being said, I think that'll do it for this Encrypted Capital recap. If you like what you heard, please drop us a comment and a like, and then we will catch you all in the next video.